The table module pattern is another domain logic pattern just like the domain model, just like the transaction script that I've talked about in other videos, except this time, instead of, let's look at our domain model, instead of having like this book class and you'd instantiate a new book every time you wanted a new book to manipulate, instead of that, in the table module, you just have one class that will control all the data for all the objects that are loaded into your application. And how does that work? Well, whenever you want to manipulate the data of an object, you pass in the ID of that object to the table module. And that might be a little bit confusing. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a demonstration here and it's all gonna make perfect sense. We're gonna understand the table module and you're gonna be able to use it whenever you need to. But when would you wanna use the table module? Well, it's, it's pretty good at handling tabular data. So data that you're loading from a database, for example. So that makes it pretty easy to integrate with a backend that is a database. And another good thing about the table module is that you only need one class instantiated to control all the data in your back end. So now that we kind of understand the table module, I want to demonstrate it just so that you can get a clear understanding of what I'm talking about and you'll be able to connect the dots and understand this pattern. All right, so right now I have this base class called module base. It doesn't have anything in here, but our checkout class and our media class, they inherit from the module base, which I will fill out later. But first thing I want to do is I want to lay out the domain logic that each of these classes are going to have. And real quick before I get started, I should go over the domain that we're working with. So it's just a library. We have our media, a bunch of media in this database back here, different types. So type zero book, type one magazine type 2 movie and then you can check out this media and each each type has a different amount of days that can be checked out so a book can be checked out 7 days magazine 14 movie 28 days so that's the domain logic that we're working with here now let's go back here and I want to kinda of stub out the domain logic that I want our table modules to have so let's look at our media here and we're just going to have a few methods here. So we want to get the name of media. Then we would have that method. And of course, since we're dealing with a table module, you have to pass in the ID of the object. Otherwise, it's just not going to know what data that we're looking for. And then another thing we, that we want is we want to get the type of media. So let's do that. Again, passing in the ID, that's like the big thing about this pattern is that you pass in the ID so that this class can handle all of your tabular data. And real quick, let's define our enum up here for media type. And let's see, book, magazine, movie. Okay. And then another thing is some domain logic that we want is we want to get the max checkout days for a specific media. So that's just going to be an integer. Get max checkout days. And of course, ID. So another thing that I want to show here is that I have this checkout module and I have this media module. And as you can see, there's like a one-to-one -one relationship between modules and database tables. And this is actually what is suggested in Martin Fowler's Patterns of Enterprise Architecture. Except he does also say that you don't necessarily need to split them up. Like in this example, we could combine the checkout media class into just one big media class and have all this domain logic in the media module as well. But we're going to keep it separated for now because that is what he recommends. Although it's not against the rules if you want to combine them. So now that we have all this domain logic stubbed out, we need to actually have a way that we can get this data 
from the database. And that is going to be in our module base class, which is inherited by all of our table modules. So now this module base class, what this is going to do is it's just going to be a bunch of helper methods for our table module. So it's going to deal with things like database access and getting data from the database for a particular record. So I decided to actually skip over the implement implementation of this module base class because it's kind of just raw SQL. And this video is about the table module pattern, not SQL database access. And it takes a while to write out and the video is just getting too long. Okay, but anyways, what we have is, I'll show you guys these methods. So we have a get table method, which will return a data table. And what that does is, is it creates a SQL connection with our connection string, opens the connection, creates this data adapter. We do a select command, selecting all the data from the table name, which is passed in through the constructor of the subclasses. And then we just fill the data table with the adapter and return the table. For get row, so if we want to get row by ID, we create this filter, which is kind of like a where clause and we're looking for IDs equaling the ID that we pass in. And we get our table, and we run a select with that where clause and just take the first one, the first row that has this ID. If it doesn't exist, return null. For get column, it's actually a generic method. So what it will do is it'll get the column from the database and then cast it to whatever type that this method, that this generic method uses. So we get the row by ID and then we just index by the column name and cast that result and get the column. So get name, actually before we begin let's generate our constructor. So it's going to take a connection string. Not going to need a table name because we can just type that right here. Our table name is medium, is media. And then for get name, it's pretty simple, you know, we can just say we can get the column, it's going to be a string, the ID and the column name for the name column is just name. So now this is, this is getting pretty easy to implement. This time we're getting the column, we're going to cast that column media type and the column name is just type. As you can see in our database, name type. Now get max checkout days, that's actually not something that we store in the database, that's just going to be some domain logic that is based off the media type. So we're just going to switch, do a little switch statement here on our media type. Oh wait, nope, okay. Let's get the, we're going to do a switch statement on the type based on the ID that is passed in. Why is it not expand that? Okay, case, so if it's a book, we're going to return 28. And if it's a magazine, we're going to return 14. And if it's a movie, we're going to return 7. And then I guess by default, we'll return something like, we'll do like 28. You can do whatever you want here. Maybe you'll throw an exception. I don't know. But we're going to keep it simple. Okay. So that is pretty much it for our media class. So now let's fill out our checkout module and is checked out. Well, if the row does not exist in the checkout table, that means it's not checked out. So if let's get the row by ID. So if the row actually exists, that means it is checked out. And then let's Let's actually switch to our due date. So we're going to return get column. It's going to be a date time. And ID in the column name is, I believe, just due date. Yep, OK. All right. All right, so now we're going to implement our checkout method and to do that we're actually going to use the media table module to do this. So we're going to 
instantiate that in our constructor. First things first, we should implement our constructor based on our base class. And we're not going to need a table name. And the table name here that we're going to hard code is checkout. And then we're also going to create a media module that we can use throughout our class and just instantiate that in the constructor. All right, so now that we have that, let's implement this method. So we're gonna have a success flag and that's what we're gonna return. So if the ID that we're checking already is checked out, then success equals false. Actually, we don't even need to do that because success is false by default. So we'll say if it's not checked out, then success will equal true. But then we actually have to do the checkout. So we're going to need a new connection here. And what this is going to do is insert our insert a new checkout into the database. So let's open this connection. Oh, I need to import this. Oh, why are we getting them? Okay, this cannot be named checkout because that's the name of, name of our class. We'll name it checkout media. Okay. So let's open this connection. And then we're going to need to create a query, a new command here. So a new SQL command. It's going to need text. So we're going to insert into checkout values media ID and due date. Then we're going to have to insert these parameters. So add with value parameter name is media ID. And the value of that is just going to be the ID. And we're going to copy that due date. And the due date is going to be the current date plus the days plus the max checkout days that this certain media can be checked out. So that's where we're going to use our media module. So say media module, get max checkout days for this ID. And that should be good. Then we just have to execute the command. And if everything works out, then success will equal true. I'm not really wrapping this in a try catch. I suppose I could, but this is just an example, so we'll keep it simple. You know, this video is already getting kind of long for something kind of simple, but I want to show you guys how this really works. So now that we have this finished, let's go to our program and let's let's use our table modules. So. Let's create a new checkout module. And we're going to need a connection string. Let me grab that real quick. All right, there we go. Got a connection string. So we're going to use that. And let's write to the console checkout module. And we're going to check out say media ID one which is a book and then let's do a read here so we can see the output and this should give us a true because it is not checked out yet oh but instead we get an exception I'll have to take a look at this so ID oh you know what 
column name for checkout table is actually media ID, not ID. So this little where is where is our module base? Okay. So this little this little thing is not gonna work, okay? So what I wanna do is just I guess we'll just have to pass this through the constructor primary key column name and have that up here. And then we're going to say primary key column name. And then we're going to have to actually pass this through the constructor of all of our subclasses. So for this, the primary key column name is media ID. And then for media, it's just ID. You should probably just make it ID for all your tables. I was just being an idiot when I made this project, I guess. <laughs> but this is just a way that you can fix it. So not too hard to fix, just a little bit wonky, I guess. And now it should work. But again, we get an exception. What is going on here? Okay, I think I know the issue. So we make our SQL command, but we don't give the connection. All right, we're just being idiots. It's okay. <laughs> now it should work. There we go. True. Now let's look at our checkout table, and it is checked out. And it is. Let's see, today's date is the 10th of November, so 28 days. So all of this is actually working. Our get max checkout days is functioning. We're getting all this domain logic into our table modules, and Let's, let's review this a little bit. So one thing about our module base is that we're actually querying the database every time we want a column. So this can take, this is kind of like intense on the database. It, it might be a little bit slow. And in Patterns of Enterprise Architecture, what Martin Fowler does is he actually initializes his modules with a data table object already created. So he doesn't have to access the, the database at all. Which is kind of good because you know you you never know where your data is coming from. It could come from a file, a CSV. So he passes the data table into the into the constructor and just manipulates it from there. And then when he's done, some other object will save that data table to the database. So that's another way you can do it. But I wanted to keep it simple because that kind of bleeds into other patterns that I want to talk about later. So I kind of left that out. But if you if you want to just pass in the data table through the constructor, you can do that. And another thing is these are methods. Everything is a method. And the reason I chose to do that instead of a property, which it could be a property, but since we're dealing with database access here, I wanted to make them methods in case you ever wanted to make them asynchronous. But again, if you're passing a data table through the constructor, then you don't need to make them asynchronous. So what do I think about the table module? Well, I actually, I don't, I don't hate it. I think it's, it's a pretty reasonable pattern. You have your objects. They look like regular domain objects. It's pretty organized. The only issue I kind of have with it is that it kind of combines your data access to your domain logic. And... I still think it's best to keep those things separated, which is why I still prefer domain models. So that's going to wrap it up for the table module. This video went a little bit long, but we went over a lot of things. We did a little bit of raw database access. I guess it's always good to keep up on that, learn a little bit about that. But that is the table module. I hope you guys learned everything you need, you need to know about the table module. And thank you all for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, or subscribe for more. Thank you.